so many devices, so little time. There. Better? So sorry, many struggles. It is five o'clock. You know this already. Hello. I know. It's been five o'clock for a whole 20 seconds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So it's Watch Me Work. It's Thursday, the 13th of August. It's uh, national or is it international left handed people's day? Um, so maybe we write, if those of us who aren't left handed, write with your left hand. My son's left handed. Um, it's also five months since my show's been on hiatus, which is really crazy. Anyway, this is Watch Me Work. We've been doing the show for 11 years. We started in the lobby of the public theater. I was at a desk with a typewriter and sat down to work and asked people to sit around and work with me. And then I took their questions about their creative process and I told them it was a play that we were making. First the action and then the dialogue. And we've been doing the same thing for 11 years. Thank you to the public theater for supporting us all this while. And thank you to Howl Round, who came on a few years ago to help us live stream from the lobby of the Public Theater. And since this COVID thing has come on to help us create this beautiful community, we do the same thing every day. That's why it's easy. We work for 20 minutes and then we, I take your questions about your work and your creative process. And if you have a question along those lines, Audrey is going to tell you how to get in touch. Go, Audrey. Thanks, SLP. Um, so if you are inside of the Zoom and you have a question, all you need to do is click on the participant tab. Likely it's at the bottom of your screen if you're on a laptop or the top if you're on an iPad or a tablet. Click on that screen, it'll pop out a little box and at the bottom of that box there's a raise your hand button. Click on that, a little blue hand appears and we'll call on you if we have time. Um, if you're watching on HowlRound.tv, uh, all you need to do is tweet at us to ask a question. That's at WatchMeWorkSLP with the hashtag HowlRound, H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D. Or you can tweet at the Public Theater, which is at Public Theater NY, or you can write to the Public Theater's Instagram. And those are the ways. Those are the ways. Okay, so let's get started here. We...
Okay, here we are yeah. for the dialogue part of the play. That's right. There are no questions at the moment. Oh, good. Well, we can just keep working. We've got a question. Larry. See what happens. <laughs> hey, Larry. How's it going, Larry? Are you able to unmute? Hi. Uh, Hi. I only oh. have, uh, I, I have just a visual. Yeah, where's your background? Where oh, look. Nice. Very nice. So um, in that luxurious position of being actually able to uh, consider structure and I have enough parts to actually have parts to mix and match and decide what my act two is supposed to look like and whether the things that went in act one belong in act one and stuff like that. So just taking some of your advice. It's post-its not, no cards, but I like my post-its. Post-its are fun. Yeah, you like your post-its, huh? Other coding little left brain engagement. So just calling out the process, that's all. Sounds great, it looks great too, Larry, thank you. Where's your Aurora Borealis in the background? My son is occupying the station at the moment. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that's really funny, that's hysterical. All right. Up next, we've got Christina. Go for it, Christina. Hey, Christina. Hello again. Hey, girl. I just want, first, I want to thank you for uh, what you offered on Tuesday about showing up for the work every day and oh, great. letting that look whatever way it needs to look. Um, so I, you know, trick myself into thinking that I need to write a scene every time I sit down to write a scene. Mm -hmm. um, but what I realized was that I have actually been doing a lot of work on the play, not typing it, you know, like consistent work. Um, I listen to music a lot. So there's been a lot of, not so much now that I'm not walking around the city anymore, but a lot of time spent writing in that kind of way. So I sat down Tuesday and wrote it all, wrote out part two and three, and it kind of just like blew. So there's a version of it. Don't know what it looks like. I haven't looked at it yet, but um, it exists. Um, so thank you for that. Cause it kind of, there's a valve that opened. Um, a question I have is about dramaturgy and inspiration. Um, I'm reading a lot of Baldwin and Angela Davis right now, which is doing wonders to my psyche. Um, and I'm noticing that my writing is uh spicier or charged in a certain way and it's not necessarily a bad thing i just want to make sure that i'm staying on track with my play um so my question is how do you balance your what you get inspiration from and your dramaturgy in a way that you can still let your voice come out in your writing and take what you need and let it go and then be slp on the page yeah, uh, that's a great question, Christina. I, um, I, I don't read as much when I'm writing. Okay. You know what I mean? That's just my personal thing. You mm -hmm. know, I separate the, the two pretty much. And um, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, to read Baldwin and Angela Davis is always great. But if you're concerned about your voice being able to shine through, then just, you know, okay. yeah, <laughs> just be mindful of that concern that you're happy, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Um, uh, but you've, you've written drafts of your play now, so maybe in this pause, before you do the next draft, you can enjoy your reading and then, you know, go back to your writing. You know, I just, I just kind of slow down the reading when I'm writing and just in general. Okay, mm -hmm. sounds like great reading. Yeah, oh, and well. great writing. Congratulations on your writing too, girl. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I feel like I, I like, I don't know. I feel lighter. It's very strange, but it's it's freeing. Great job. Thanks, Christina. Thank you. Um, up next, we've got Ronald. Ronald, are you there? Hello. Hi. Hey, hey, Ronald. Hi. I'm actually new to this space, so I just want to ah. thank you all for having the space to begin with. I'm very, I feel very honored and lucky to be here. Um, so I'm actually very young. I'm new to writing. 
um, and I'm 24 years old. And honestly, when it comes to my experience with writing, it's usually been academic or some kind of essayist type thing. Um, and I love to edit. That's actually my one thing. I love to edit things. I don't know why. Um, but in coming to this space, it feels like creativity is like the main driver. So my question is, is what is it that kind of inspired you to get into writing to begin with, you know, to dedicate your life to this? Because these are the questions I'm asking myself. In what ways, like, how, what is my relationship with writing and how can I get more involved? And in what ways do I think writing um, can be a larger part of my life? So in what ways, like, when did you, like, consider yourself a writer, you know? And when did you start showing up every day to put in that work? And what's gotten you to where you are and kind of like, you know, yeah, so that's my question. Yeah, so, so Ronald, so right, you're new. So this is, I'm gonna do the, you know, the jujitsu move that I've done so many times in these 11 years, because the question is about you. Yeah, yeah, no, no, of course. Yeah, so you know what I'm <laughs> gonna say. So I'm gonna say like, why are you feeling moved to be a writer right now? I mean, you know, to, to start writing right now and devote, you know, some of your life to writing. What's moving you? What's, 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 what's firing you? To, well, how'd you even get here today? Oh, my friend Christian's actually been part of this group. I don't know if Christian's spoken. I don't want to also put him on blast either, you know, but he's in here. Um, <laughs> so I'm here because I'm actively exploring it, you know. Um, I do get, like, joy out of writing, and I think, mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. I th there are things that cross my mind which give me inspiration. I generally think I'm a creative person, mm -hmm. um, and I get satisfaction out of creating things, you know. So mm -hmm. I guess it's a matter of, like, the questions that I ask myself are, like how important do I think the things that I'm thinking are, like why should I be writing them, you know? And like, mm -hmm. is it like, is it worth the time, you know? Finding like those purpose type questions mm -hmm. because I think there's inherently like a purpose in writing, obviously, like it's been around forever, not like I've mm -hmm. seen anything and stuff, you know? But I don't know, um, I don't think I've ever showed up day to day to write something the way that this group has before, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, like I, I just inherently understand like the importance of writing. But mm -hmm. for me personally, I think it's just a side that I want to explore more to see, like I feel like I have this talent. I just kind of see what I want to do with mm -hmm. it and in what ways I can unpack it. Mm -hmm. I think that's great. I don't think, you know, those are great answers right now, you know, and they resonate with you because they're yours. And so what we would suggest is just show up every day for it, you know? And again, since you're new, this thing, it's a timer, you know? And you can tell the difference, hopefully, between this thing and this thing. This yeah. thing is a phone. Your phone is crack and the timer helps you keep time because your phone is, is full of temptations, you know what I'm saying? So if you can, Ronald, get a timer, a simple kitchen timer and give yourself you know, 20 minutes a day just to show up with your notebook, right? Um, who said, was it Thoreau or Emerson? You know, I know by going where I need to go. So the answers to what should I be writing? Why does writing appeal to me? All those answers will begin to unfold. The more time you put into the craft, it will start to uh, talk to you. Or if it's already started to talk to you, it, the conversation will deepen and become more rich like uh, you would be developing a relationship with your craft. And if you just put the time in and it's the easiest thing to do and it produces magic, that's where the magic is at. The magic is in the time that you put into it and it holds all the answers because you're gonna be finding your, the answers within you, which I believe um, are the most important answers you're gonna find. Thank you so much. You're welcome so much. Thanks for joining. Um, all right. Um, up next, we've got Camille. Are you there, Camille? Yep. Hi. Hi there. Hey there. Hi. I am also new to the community. Like oh Ronald, my I just found out from my beloved yoga teacher over the weekend that this was happening. And uh, it's really exciting. Um, 
So my question is, I'm, I'm a writer, I write nonfiction, my background's journalism, and starting in about June, well, actually June 11th, I know the exact date, I sort of set myself the artist way morning pages. And it, it went for a little bit of time sort of, you know, musing, nice sort of rambling into like memoir, short, very short, almost like flash nonfiction stories of my life. And I got really excited about it. My husband's an artist and he kind of said, hey, why don't you put some of this out there? So I started sharing it on Facebook and my friends are going crazy over it. I don't, I guess my question is, I have a novel that I wanna write and I feel like this period has really helped me kind of like, almost like creative therapy going through the, uh, these short little memoir takes of my life. And I'm just wondering, like, how do I know what form this should take? Uh, or is it just a form of therapy to help me get to the novel writing? So I wondered if you had any, any thoughts about that in mm -hmm. your own experience. Yeah, I, I would say if it, again, we were talking about feel yesterday, and if it feels good and you're, Every day you're kind of encouraged to continue, then I would say right now, definitely right now, it is the form that it should be in. Do you know what I mean? I mean, yeah. it's all good. It doesn't have to, um, you know, be a, a, a stepping stone to something bigger. It can be the thing itself. It sounds like it's going really, really well. That's it's thrilling. fun. It's obsessively fun. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. great. Yeah. You know, I keep yeah. it just like, like it is. Um, okay. And just keep writing them to yeah. you, you know, and maybe one day it's going to slow down a little bit and then you slow, you're writing more slowly and then it picks up again, you know, it, and you, you've got many, many, many of them, these short bursts of, of memoir things. It sounds great. Yeah. You know, and they could, you can imagine them in a collection of, you know, of, of, of whatever, of, people were still reading, you know, a collection, right? That, that could be kind of great. Yeah. That could be kind of great. Yeah. 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 Thank you. You're welcome. And thank you in general to everybody. This is an amazing space. Thanks, Neil, because you guys are here. Totally. All right, up next we've got Vernita. Go for it, Vernita. All right, um, can you all hear me? All right, hi everyone. Hi, SLP, uh, hi, Audrey. Um, good to be here. Thank you, as always, for the space. Um, I am coming in with a an update slash, uh, I guess, part two to my last question. So I'm continuing to move forward on my hot but smart article, and I've been pulling together my allies, which is which is great, and I'm very excited about that. But um, I think I talked last time, and I really took to heart the piece around. I, I wrote down my goals. Um, I talked about, you know, doing kind of my brain dump first and having had the experience of going so far out with the stream of consciousness, having a hard time pulling it back in. Well, I have like my three very succinct bullet points as far as the goals for the piece. I feel like I have gotten um, all of the points that I want to cover are there. However, I have still done this brain dump where I now have 7,000 words that I'm trying to call down to, you know, under 2,000. Even 1,600 seems kind of long. Um, and so um, what I have now, though, is like there's just like a lot of versions of any particular point that I want to make. You know, any one sentence, I might have drafted four different versions of that sentence. And I'm having a hard time deciding which of these four versions is best to move the piece along and support said three goals. So um, any, so I thought to ask if you had any thoughts about that. Yeah, so it's like the edit, you're in the editing phase kind of, right? You're in the editing phase and you have, um, right. Um, 
so you have to focus. We talked the other day about putting blinders on, right? You've got a lot of material and now you've got to focus, okay? So I would say focus on one bullet point a day. Okay, will that get in, in the way? I mean, will that still allow you to make your, your finish line that you want to get to, Vernita? Um, I probably do need to move a bit faster than that. My my thought was I, I was trying to get a, at least like a rough, didn't have to be polished, but a rough first draft to one of my allies tomorrow and um, so that he could take a look at it over the weekend. Okay, um, okay. All right. Uh, All right, yeah. no, we can, we can do that. It's, where are you? Are you in New York, East Coast, I'm West York. Coast? Okay, yeah. okay. I'm just trying to factor in the time. All right. So tomorrow. So like EOD tomorrow, end of day. Yeah. Okay. So um, you're gonna take. Do you have all day to write tomorrow? Yes. Okay. And it's whatever it is, five thirty. So it's gonna be six o'clock at the end of this. Okay. So you take you take an hour with each bullet point then. You have four? Okay. So take an hour or take an hour. Um, yeah. Do you stay up late? I can. Okay. I'm just, I'm just trying to give you like an hour on each one. Okay. So if you can't, or no, how about this? Even better. How long are the bullet points? Like, like what this, this? Oh, I see what, what you're are, saying. I'm, I'm trying well, to, I'm trying to give you, if you spend 30 minutes on each bullet point mm -hmm. today. Okay. So from six to whatever, what is that? Two hours of writing. 30 minutes, you just focus on one. You don't look at them all, you know, go over, you know, just focus on one bullet point for 30 minutes. Okay, so after this watch me work is over, you can set your timer, work on one bullet point. Stand up, like we told, we're talking to somebody the other day, we read it aloud, just one bullet point for 30 minutes. Okay. Just focus on it. Look at all the versions, all the variations of sentences, whatever, for 30 minutes. Enjoy it for 30 minutes. When the timer goes off, go to the next bullet point. Just focus on that one. Don't go look back at the old one. Nope, nope. Just, just focus on the one you're looking on. Bullet point number two. Just focus on it for 30 minutes. Beat beat. The timer goes off. Go to the next one and so on until you've done, worked on your four. Okay? okay. Put it away. Put it away. Sleep on it. Repeat tomorrow. Uh, at least like two more times or one more time really if you want and a second time if you want to do it again. Okay. So then in that, that makes sense. And then my, I guess my follow-up question to that is, because there is a lot of material in the sense of like, there's the three bullet points are, were the goals. Like what's my point that I want to make or mm -hmm. what is it that I want to be the outcome mm -hmm. of the article? Mm -hmm. But then I also created this outline and that also has a lot of bullet points so that I could, you know, structure how I'm telling this story in order to achieve the three goals. Mm -hmm. However you divide up the work, mm -hmm. what you need to do, Vernita, is divide up the work and focus. So if you've got three bullet points and an outline, you're going to spend a certain amount of time working on each thing. Do you, do you understand? So, okay. you, so 30 minutes working on a bu bullet points, work through those and the outline, spend 30 minutes working on it. Just focus. I, I feel like you've got a lot of work and it's very hard to just focus. Yes. Okay. So again, and what's great is that you're going to hand it off to your, your friend, one of your allies by end of day tomorrow, which gives you plenty of time. And the best way to work on it between now and then is to isolate the parts that you need to work on. Okay. If you start going from one bullet point to the other, to the outline, to the this, that, you know, what am I looking at? Oh, I'm looking at everything. It's very overwhelming. It also hurts your neck. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So focus and then go to the next thing. Focus, go to the next one. Focus, go to the next one. Okay. Okay. I'm with you. Okay. okay. <sighs> Thank you. Yeah. Sounds awesome. like you're doing a lot of great work. It really does. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm yeah. excited. It's, 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 getting, it's getting energy behind it. Great. That's really great. Thank you, Renita. Oh, sorry, I cut you off. I appreciate you. <laughs> um, Timothy, you're next. I'm clicking again. Hold on. Are you there, Timothy? Oh, there we go. Yes. Cool. Hello. Uh, hi. Um, 
Um, this question sort of goes uh, in the guise of what you were saying about showing up every day. Mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of simple, but I was wondering, are, are you always working on something or do you recommend that? Or is it more important to even show up every day when you're like finished something and haven't started the next thing? Or, you know, what, what are your, what are your thoughts about that? I joked, my husband was like, so when you're next not working on anything, what are you going to do? And I'm like, don't even, <laughs> don't, you're making fun of me. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the dip, my difficulty is that I do a lot of um, work for hires. So I'm in this, like I said, five months hiatus. I've been working on this genius Aretha thing every single day, seven days a week for the past five mm -hmm. months. So that when we go back into production with COVID, we're going to be ready. Um, and I'm writing two movies. So when I work on, when I'm not working on anything, I'm usually doing something, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like to, I like to do things, you know what I'm saying? And, but then mm -hmm. like you guys, when you have, you know, research, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You can, you know, or, or maybe reading, you know, our friend Pima Children, you know, that could be kind of, that's showing up for yourself. You can show up for sure. yourself and your work in so many different ways. Sometimes sitting on the beach or in the backyard or in the park, you know, just soaking up the vitamin D is showing up for your work also. So I think most importantly is the getting into the habit of showing up for yourself. I think that's the, the, the most important thing. So that you're creating this, this garden for yourself to return to when it's time to do a job. Does that make sense, Timothy? Yes, it's perfect yeah. sense. Okay. I don't mean to be, become like workaholics. I just mean to create yeah, that yeah. space so that if you have kids or a spouse or whatever or mm -hmm. live with folks and they know that you're working, they know that you value that, that uh, schedule for yourself, if you will. That's kind of what it's cool. about. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, Timothy. Thanks, Timothy. Um, up next is Ellie. Are Hello. you there, Ellie? Yes. Hi. Hi. Um, this is my first time here as well, so thank you all. Um, I just learned about this, and this is really fun and amazing to uh, get to write with people. Um, my question is um, something I've found myself struggling with on my writing recently. And I just actually got some uh, feedback and critique that parallels with my own self critique is that just the tendency to over explain in my writing and kind of not trust the, the story to do the work itself. I find myself really drawn to writing um, strong thematic pieces with a very strong core central theme and idea. But then I sometimes find myself getting dragged into writing the theme what, instead of writing the story. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm wondering if you have advice on how to balance having like that strong theme and letting that be a big part of the story, but having the characters still lead the story and not getting dragged into this over explaining and kind of giving mm -hmm. the theme space to be, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah, so you, why are you attracted to theme, Ellie? Um, I just, I, I really love um, theater for social justice mm -hmm. and I'm really drawn to uh I always say I'm drawn to writing things that um deal with tragedy and trauma but through a lens of hope mm -hmm. so kind of so I'm really drawn to writing um that focuses on, on, on themes of like, how do we move forward or how do we deal with certain issues? So I find myself usually writing about one particular issue, but then for example, the last piece I did um, where I got this feedback was I um, produced it at the college, Penn State. I just graduated uh -huh. from Penn State. Oh, congratulations. Um, thank you. And I produced it there and it was all about drinking culture on college campuses and the effect that that has on students, on um, the university, on parents who lose children to alcohol abuse. Mm -hmm. And so I find myself really wanting to write about one single issue. Mm -hmm. But then I feel like mm -hmm. sometimes the issue will cover the mm -hmm. actual story. Right, right. Hmm. 
So if you were going, because while you're talking, you know, everything you were talking about had words in it that made me think of people. Mm -hmm. But when you used the, kept using the word issue, I didn't hear any people in there, just tonally. Mm. So if you're walking, I don't know, this is weird. If you're walking into a house and you look around the house, I want you to see the people. You know, I mean, the, the, the thing you play wrote about college drinking, that's mm -hmm. a really important issue. But more important than the issue are the people. Right. Right. We, we want to, we want to, I mean, we want to know the people. Right. So like a play like, oh, I don't know, um, you know, King Lear. Do you know that play? Mm -hmm. King Lear. Right. So the issue of that play is, oh, I don't know, um, power and the abuse of power and what love what is love really and parents and children right kind of right. stuff like that i don't know <laughs> but who the fuck cares right king yeah. Lear, he's an old grumpy dude he divides up his kingdom and asks his daughter who loves me the most and then he's <laughs> around trying to get hugs and shit and he brings his fool with him and cordelia and right Right. Why does a dog have breath and now no breath at all? I mean, issue? What? Who cares? <laughs> Get into your characters, your people. Social justice plays are very important to write, but they wouldn't really fly if they weren't, they didn't have great characters in them. Right. Right? Right? Okay, so fall in love with your people. So if you have, if you think of an issue play that you want to write, say, who is that person who's yeah. going through that thing? You know, get in with, with the people. You, yeah. you see what I'm saying? Like, I who do. is she? What's her deal? How's she struggling? How does she get from day to day? You know, so the issue, and I got to the issue or the theme will start to fade away, but it won't be any less pungent. Right. Or present because you would have, you, the issue is going to be like wine. Everybody's going to be like totally seeping, intoxicated on this amazing issue, right? I've, uh, I've yet, in my 190 billion years of writing, <laughs> I've yet to write a play where I even know what the theme is. I read about it. People tell me, oh, that's the theme. Okay, great. Yeah. I think yeah. I sometimes get too bogged down being like, this is when at the end of the day, you're right, meaning is subjective. So even if I have this strong theme, everyone will get a different thing from it. Yeah. And again, part of your power as a writer is you don't need to tell people what to think. Right. I find plays and novels and, and movies that, that are like that very thin in their writing. Yeah. There's a, there's a theme and you get it and homelessness is bad. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, you know, we all got to join together and be friends, you know, ah, whatever, you know, <laughs> but you tell me King Lear, it's like, oh man, there's so much going on in that play. Yeah. You know, or fences. Wow. I don't know the theme, but wow, the characters, right. And actors are going to get excited and they, you know, and, and your director, she'll get thrilled and your designers, you know, you, you're creating a world, right? Right. So get excited about people. You like people, do you? Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> well, there you go. Thank you. That's very helpful. You're welcome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks, Ellie. Um, all right. We've got about 10 minutes left and we're going to go to Lynn. Are you there, Lynn? Hi, I have one question. And when you talked about theme just now, mm -hmm. I, I couldn't help thinking of white noise and how, you know, I mean, you cared so much about the characters that, I mean, it, it broke your heart. And, and uh, of course there was theme and it, and it was, you know, you know, it hurts you, but it hurts you because it hurt the characters, you know, because you showed the humanness of, you know, so, okay, that's about you. Okay, um, that's the question. How about you? How you doing, Lynn? I'm doing okay. I, I, I have like two questions. One, mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, also, I was reading Pema Chodron, uh, <laughs> and um, I had the honor of going for a weekend up to that amazing place where, where she um, used to give uh, seminars, you know, just like weekends. And it was quite remarkable. But I, when I was looking at her book last night, I, I saw this recognizing our kinship with others. And I was thinking about that and how this space is so um, remarkable in this. And it's, it's remarkable in the way that um, you know, I write for an hour, I, I do my writing, I do my work, I put my ass in the seat and mm -hmm. you know, I show up. Mm -hmm. But when I show up with other people doing the same thing, mm -hmm. there's, there's a kind of power to it that I do not have when I'm alone. Right. Uh, and, and that's what makes this so remarkable. I know we just do 20 minutes, I'd love it to, to be longer. But, you know, it, it's just a, it's an energy thing, which I, I think is remarkable and uh, inexplicable for me. Uh, so my question, okay, that's that. My question is, when we spoke uh, the other day, you said, talk to your characters mm -hmm. and talk louder, you know. And I, so I was walking in the park and it was really hot and my mask was so wet, you know. <laughs> and all of a sudden, uh, these other characters came for another piece, another play, you know. And I thought, what? Well, it was so kind of loud, you know, these characters, these other characters talking, they had nothing to do with the play I was working on. Uh, was that you? Da, 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 da. Keep going. Okay. And, <laughs> and who, so who do I follow? I mean, should I just follow these people who are talking to me? Who are, uh, are just, a, it's a different story. It's a different, you know. My sister Lynn, how easily you get distracted. My phone beeps. You're like, <laughs> what? Well, okay. Yeah, okay. You, can, you, yeah you, you can have you can have a little a little pad of paper if you want. I mean, it's great that you're going out and you're talking and you're talking to your characters. That's great. Okay. So you, and you're listening. You're opening your ears up. Great. And you're hearing things and you're excited about what you're hearing. Great. That is not a, the, no need for you to get distracted. Otherwise, I mean, then you could start working with those characters and get distracted tomorrow, you know, and then you're just going to jump from thing to thing, which might not be very satisfying. So I would suggest you can walk around with your notebook, you know, not this, but a notebook <laughs> and you can jot down some of the things that you're hearing, or you can take your phone and record some of the things that you're thinking about, you know, and jot them down later. Um, but I would suggest, you know, if it, it's, it's Monday, it's, it's Thursday, and I'm going to focus on this project, you know, or I'm going to write on this project for 20 minutes, and then I will jump to the next project. But, but uh, just be mindful that when my phone went off, you were like, huh? Yes, focus yeah. is really important. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, because, I mean, it's important because you want to, you want to, you want to accumulate, you know, you want your writing to start to continue because yes. you've been writing a lot you know you want your writing to continue to accumulate and especially in these times where we're just pulled in so many different directions it does help to just keep your focus yes it, yeah. it, it really it, you're absolutely right i have my whole sleep cycle is different now because i don't know why but you know i'm i'm going to sleep like at four or five in the morning oh wow like me you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so uh it feels like that, you know, it, it's not, it doesn't feel bad. It's just, I like to be on more of a schedule, mm -hmm. you know, my life. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's more like what you're talking, you talked to Bermuda about, I mean, you gave her the structure of her day tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You know, she has some, she has, a, but she also has a deadline, you know, to this hour work on this part, this hour work on this part, you know, 
like that. I mean, that kind of focus and that kind of structure is so important. And I think yeah, but, and it's completely made up. I mean, it's it's not completely arbitrary because you know she has no. a deadline. She has a but it's completely specific to what she wants to accomplish. Exactly. So, for example. If, you know, if, if Ronald we talked to wants to get, you know, wants to deepen and unpack his, his desire to write, he has a structure. It's 20 minutes a day, focus on it. You know, we can identify the goal and then we can create some kind of a means to achieve something like that. Um, that's all it is. It's, I mean, we, and we can do this on our own for ourselves. And we have done it. Those of us who have finished things or at least shown up a couple of days in a row, you know, Larry's got his post-it board. I mean, people, we're, we're doing that for, for ourselves, right? I know. <laughs> yeah, okay, look. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So. Hi, Thanks, Larry. Lynn. Thank you. Um, all right, we've got about a minute left. And we actually don't have any questions. And I thought it would be a good time for me to chat about what's coming up. Um, so, uh, just so everybody knows, we're actually going to be taking a hiatus um, for the next few weeks, um, and we're going to be changing our structure when we come back in the fall um, for uh, uh, post Labor Day. So we will be working that out in the beginning of September, and we will keep you all posted as we have new dates um, as we can really come back in the fall. And that's that's pretty much it. Everything we've been talking about, whether it's whether we've been talking specifically about your project, what you're going through, what you're trying to achieve, everything that we've talked about hopefully has been useful to what you're going through now, what you might be going through in a week or so. And again, the most important thing is that you continue to show up for yourself, continue to show up for your work. That will solve, in my experience, again, a million years of writing. <laughs> that will solve 99% of the problems. And the other problem is you can't solve because there's somebody else's shit and you know, you got to let it go. So to, so to get your own work done, just keep showing up to your work. And when you find yourself thinking, oh, it's too hard, spend a little time, more time with it. Beautiful things will unfold for you. It's, it's, I mean, everybody on this, in this group has had that experience so far. So, okay. And we'll be back. We'll be, we'll be back. back. Okay. Yeah. And I'll be sure to email everybody that we are okay. back. We, are. Well, we love you and, and be well. Yeah. Oh, thanks for the heart, Mo. We love you guys. And I'm so proud of you guys. Look at what we've achieved. Yay. Love kisses. I know. Thanks, I SLP. Thank you. Thanks, Audrey. Have a good hiatus. Bye -bye. You too.